Today we are taking a trip on one of Spain's most unique high-speed trains. Featuring variable gauge technology, these trains have movable wheels allowing them to operate across Spain's high-speed and legacy rail network. Meaning these trains are fully capable of reaching speeds of up to 250 km per hour, but also running on the slow old lines at a snail's pace. Join me as we explore the unique features of this train, as we make the journey from the high-speed station in Zaragoza to the beautiful legacy railway terminus in Bilbao. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today's journey starts in the Spanish city of Zaragoza, at the greatly named Delicious station. The station is relatively new, dating back to 2003, and was opened around the time the first section of the Madrid to Barcelona high-speed line opened, which was later to be extended all the way to Barcelona by 2008. Anyway, let's head inside. The station has all the amenities you'd expect, from ticket office to restaurants. Our train today will be the 1048 to Bilbao, operated by Renfe, the Spanish national train operator. As with all trains departing from the high-speed platforms in Spain, there's a small security check. It's fairly painless, you just have to have your back scanned and there's no real restrictions on what you can bring. It's not like an airport where you have to unpack a lot of stuff. But do keep in mind there can be a bit of a queue, so do allocate enough time to pass through it. Despite just being one massive box, I really like how open and airy this station feels. Here we see one of Renfe's Aave high-speed trains arriving. I've done a review of these trains on their low-cost brand Avlo. Check the card in the top right-hand corner for that video. In addition, the station is also served by some of Renfe's classic broad-gauge trains, running long and medium-distance services on the legacy network. But I've kept the station's best facility to last. There's a hotel in the station walls, with a great view of the railway. And I just had to stay there, you know, for research purposes only. And in the meantime, our train is now approaching the station, having come from Barcelona. Our train is from the CAF CPF family and capable of speeds of up to 250 km per hour, in addition to being able to change gauge. The stop in Zaragoza is brief, so let's get on right away. I'll be traveling in what's equivalent to first class today. All tickets come with a seat reservation, but I just chose to sit here as the train wasn't so busy. And a brief moment later, we are off for our four and a half hour journey up towards Bilbao. Leaving Zaragoza, we don't get up to that much speed before it's time to break again. Our train will now need to switch from the high-speed tracks to the regular legacy network tracks, which is done through this building. The train moves slowly but smoothly through the building, and the train's wheels are now being moved slightly to fit on the wider broad gauge tracks. It's honestly a very quick and simple process, compared to something that just a few years ago would have taken a long time to replace the entire bogey on the train or required a train change. And that's our train done, and we are now ready to head on to the legacy network. And now that we are ready to do that, let's take a closer look at the rest of the route for today's journey. We are on board Renfe's Alvia train number 438, which started in Barcelona before coming to Zaragoza, where we joined the train. From here, the train continues on the legacy line, stopping in various smaller towns along the route up towards Bilbao, where we will arrive after 4 hours and 48 minutes. The section from Zaragoza to Bilbao is 340 km, and that lands the train an average speed of 71 km per hour. It's a lovely spring day to be traveling by train, and we are just trundling along at this legacy line on our way to Bilbao. The train is by no means super fast, but does skip quite a few stations to improve the journey time. Our first stop is Castellón, where our train seems to be scheduled to sit for 15 minutes for apparently no reason. But hey, at least that's a good reason to go out and catch some fresh air and take a look at the station building. The line is mostly single-tracked, 
but we didn't seem to meet an oncoming train. Maybe someone familiar with the line can explain in the comments why we have an extended stop here. But after a little wait here, we are on the move again, moving on time. It's time to check out the seat. Comes with a tray table, as well as a footrest, which is hard to deploy. There's also a plug socket, found under the seat, and the recline button. The seats themselves are well padded and pretty comfortable. There's some padding on the armrest as well, and pretty comfortable seats overall. But one thing that's not too comfortable is that these trains seem to rattle a lot. I don't know, maybe I'm just being an obnoxious train travel YouTuber, but it did seem to rattle a lot more than other trains I've been on. As the line progresses towards Bilbao, we pass through more and more hilly terrain. But if the scenery isn't enough to entertain you, you can watch the movie on the in-train entertainment screen, which is found in the roof of the carriage. The section between Castellón and Miranda seems very underused. In fact, we only pass one other train, which seems to be hauling new infrastructure. Sadly, this is the case with a lot of rail in Spain, where many of the legacy lines only see about one to three trains a day. A stark contrast to some of the high-speed lines. Having spent a few days in Spain on this trip, it's fun to see the contrast between they have some of the best high-speed rail in the world and some of the worst regional rail lines as well. We are now approaching Miranda, a relatively unremarkable Spanish provincial town, but an important railway junction for the lines between Zaragoza, Bilbao, Madrid and San Sebastian. It's also home to a large railway yard where Renfe seems to be storing some of its not so well kept trains. Speaking of trains, I should probably show you around ours. We're starting off in what's equivalent to second class or standard class. There's plenty of luggage storage on board. The seats look good and comfortable in a normal 2 plus 2 layout, mostly airline style seating. And despite being only a 4 car train, comes fully equipped with a onboard bar. Various drinks, both hot and cold, are on offer, as well as some snacks and light refreshments. This is also where you will find the accessible toilet, but these trains are not step free. And now we are back in what's equivalent to first class. Again, plenty of luggage storage, mostly airline style seating, but this time in a 2 plus 1 layout. And obviously, we can't forget the all-important toilet review. It's fairly small, but has a simple locking mechanism, the water is working, and the flush is working. And it's very clean, well stocked, good job Renfe. As we're getting closer and closer to Bilbao, the scenery gets more and more green. It's very hilly up here in the Basque country, and that also means the rail line is very slow as it twists and turns around the hills. We are now passing through Ordona station, which marks the start of the Bilbao Sensenares network, one of the city's two commuter rail systems. The other system being the strange Euskotren narrow gauge railway, which I've already released a video on. Click the card in the top right hand corner to see more from that interesting system. As we are now approaching Bilbao, it's time to talk tickets. I bought mine online on the quite terrible Renfe website a day in advance, which set me back 48 euros. Not a terrible price for a last minute booking for the close to 5 hour journey on a comfortable intercity train. I just wish Renfe would update its website to make the booking process smoother and bring it into 2023. And here we are arriving into Bilbao's railway station roughly 4 minutes ahead of schedule at 15.32. Thank you so much for joining me on today's trip. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I try to upload a new video like this every Sunday. 
You can also follow me on Twitter, where I post live travel updates from my travels. It's also a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming in the future. Thanks for watching!